Well, today is the start of a new show uh, on internet radio, and it's entitled Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. It was a podcast that I was doing, and I decided to do it on internet radio instead of doing it on a video. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at a story that I read. Actually, it was an article I read uh, by W. Ross uh, Rainey, and it was entitled How to Read the Bible or Studying the Bible or Just Reading the Bible. Well, as the story goes, there was a young lady uh, who was lent a book, and uh, it was given to her by a close friend, and she tried very hard to read this book and to understand and enjoy it, but it failed. Uh, the more she read, uh, the more confused she was, and, and because she didn't understand some of it, uh, it became pretty boring to her. So the book ended up being on her shelf. But as the story goes, this young lady was a very pretty lady, and she started dating this young man, and they fell in love. And then she found out that this fellow that she fell in love with was the author of the book that was lent to her. Well, because of that, she picked it up and started reading it again, and she found it more interesting knowing the author. And not only that is uh, when she didn't understand something in the book, she went direct to her boyfriend or the author of the book and asked him questions, and he explained to her what he meant in the book. So this book became very precious to her. And seeing it was lent to her, she gave it back to her friend, but she went out and purchased another copy. I think as the story goes, she might have gotten married to this young man, but they were very much in love. Well, to begin to understand and appreciate the Bible, you must first get to know and love the author. And who is the author of the Bible but God himself? The Bible is God's word. And we read God's word expecting God to tell us things, and he does. Now, there are some that say, well, God has spoken to me. And I've always questioned the fact that if I hear voices speaking to me, I'm going to be questioning where those voices are coming from. Are they coming from God or are they coming from the dark uh, depths of hell, from Satan himself or one of his demons? You know, we have to test all spirits. That's what the Bible tells us to do. And God gives us instructions on things like this. So we learn by reading. And if we really understand the author and love the author, uh, things come to light. Now, I'd like to tell you, years ago, um, I didn't really come to know the author of the Bible until I was 40 years old. But I had picked up the Bible when I was younger, and I tried to read it. And just like this uh, young lady, I found it wasn't very interesting, and I couldn't understand it. It was too deep for me. Oh, I could understand a few things in it, but when it started coming to the deep spiritual things, it just was beyond me. So, like this young lady, I set the Bible on the shelf and didn't read it for many years. 
Well, what happened was I came to know the Lord through reading the Word of God. I had bought my mother uh, this big, huge Catholic Bible when I was in the military. And I gave it to her, um, of course. Being in the military, I was blowing my money on, on drinking and women, and I lived a wild life. So my mother actually ended up paying for the Bible. I bought it through one of those Bible salesmen that came around. I thought it was doing something good. Well, that was the Bible that I wanted to read. The only problem is uh, I relocated and I abandoned everything that I had. And I had left that Bible in a house in Milwaukee. And the kids got in and vandalized the house, and the house was all boarded up. Uh, I found this out from a friend of my daughter's. But one day, her friend was uh, living in Minneapolis, and she was, or he was going to Milwaukee. So I asked him if he would stop by the house and see if he could find a Bible. Well, he did that. And I found out that he had to break some boards off by the door, and he got into the house, and he said the whole inside of the house was destroyed, plaster off the walls, and kids really did a terrible thing by vandalizing the house. But he went right where I told them the Bible was, and he opened that wardrobe it was a built-in wardrobe right between the living room and dining room. And when he opened the door, there sat the Bible. Everything else that uh, wasn't nailed down was gone. Uh, they pretty well cleaned the whole house out, but nobody touched that Bible. He brought the Bible back, and he was staying at his brother's in Minneapolis, and he took the Bible and uh, put it in his brother's garage. Well, I couldn't stand it anymore, so I had to go up and get the Bible and bring it back, and I started reading it. And that's the Bible I came to know the Lord in. Yes, it was a Catholic Bible. I just stayed away from the notes, and I just read the text. And how I came to know the Lord was the story of Nicodemus in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. And when Nicodemus was talking to the Lord, I, it was like I was talking to him. Nicodemus was asking questions, and I was asking the same questions. And the Lord answered him. And not only did he speak to Nicodemus, but he was speaking to me. You know, he said that a man had to be born again. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God or even understand the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews, and he should have known all this stuff. The Lord was merciful to him, and he took him back to the Old Testament, to the book of Numbers, chapter 21, where the story of the bronze serpent that was made and set on a pole. The story goes like this. The people were sinning against Moses and God, and they were talking against him. So the Lord sent fiery serpents, poisonous snakes among them. And they were biting the people, and the people were dying. Well, uh, people came to Moses, and they said, pray to God that he gets rid of these snakes. But instead of doing that, God told Moses, make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And anybody that's bit by these snakes if they look to that bronze serpent, they'll live. Now, there was nothing magical or 
uh, special about this bronze serpent. But God was testing the people to see if they would believe him. Now, there were some that looked at a snake, a bronze serpent, and they lived. And there was others that didn't, and they died. And that's the example that the Lord gave to Nicodemus and to me. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So by looking to the serpent and people lived, we look to Christ lifted up and nailed on that cross for our sins. And that's how we become Christians. That's how we're saved. And that's how I got to know who the Lord was. He was God Almighty. There's another article that I read, and The Child with Seven Names. And I'm not going to talk about that. i am saved that for another broadcast. But just think about this. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He died on a cross for you, for me. It was our sins that nailed them there. I also read another article. Who killed Jesus? I'll shave that for another broadcast. Well, think about what I have to say today. And remember that God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever puts their faith and trust in him, believes in him, shall have eternal life. Well, what a wonderful thing. With that, I'm going to end my broadcast. So we will see you for now. Bye. And God bless.